Welcome to the top three qualifiers for the FIA Formula One Mexico City Grand Prix. In third place, Lando Norris. In second place, Max Verstappen. And taking the sixth pole position of his Formula One career and his first of this 2024 campaign, our pole sitter, Carlos Sainz. Carlos, brilliant job. You said in Austin that you expected Ferrari to be strong here and you've delivered. What a Q3 session. Just how sweet is this moment for you? Yeah, very sweet because, you know, it's not normal to, to have such a, a two strong laps around Mexi Me Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> I'm, my Spanish came out. Uh, around Mexico and uh, there's a lot of sliding in the lap. Uh, very difficult to put a lap together. And actually, my two laps of Q3 were almost both perfect. And uh, yeah, very happy to be to be on pole and to confirm the good form from Austin. Austin already that last lap of Q3 was coming good, um, so I had high hopes coming into Mexico. And yeah, we've managed to to keep it up. You spoke about tire preparation a moment ago. Can I ask you about hugging the pit wall at the end of the lap? That seems to be an unusual line compared to your peers. No, it's just a Lando thing that uh, he normally likes to do. He, I think it's from my racing or something. He likes doing short distance to the, to the line. And I said, well, I lose nothing by maybe if it's faster, maybe cutting a bit the, the distance, maybe it gives me a thousand or two thousands of a second that uh, I'm going to make sure this time I don't leave them out there. And uh, yeah, I remember from our McLaren days, he used to do it a lot and I was a bit puzzled. But uh, yeah, tire preparation, it's been a, an, a hot topic in Ferrari the last few races uh, because we feel like in the race we're always very strong but we seem to lack something come qualifying and yeah this year's car is very good on tires but uh, I think that sometimes it means that in quali you cannot uh, maybe extract the maximum out of the of the tires in the first time lap in 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 the soft tires and uh, yeah I put a bit of focus on that during the break the three-week break and came into Austin and, and Mexico with a couple of things that seem to, to pay off. Well, you've certainly nailed the one lap pace. Just how confident are you ahead of the Grand Prix tomorrow? Yeah, relatively confident because I know uh, my race pace should be good tomorrow. Um, yeah, probably the, the biggest uh, uh, difficult thing will be the run down into turn one and starting on pole with the slipstream. No? But uh, uh, I think you can still defend, you can still make it stick into turn one uh, starting on pole and that will be my target tomorrow. Well, it is the longest run of the season to turn one. How different is your approach at the start here compared to other races from pole? Not much, really. I just need to make sure I do a good zero to 100, which is, yeah, um, the most important thing when you start on pole. Just make sure you, you do a good jump. I'm from there and obviously do the best I can to defend. I have uh, two guys behind fighting for quite important things tomorrow and the run down into turn one should be interesting. I have obviously less to lose in that sense and uh, yeah, I'll make sure that I, I try and keep P1. All right. Very well done today. Good luck with that. Max, if we can come to you now. You had to deliver on the second lap of Q3 and you did. Just how pleased are you with what you've achieved today? Yeah, I mean, um, yesterday I did like four laps, two, two laps um, on lower fuel and uh, two laps on high fuel. So it was basically just a complete write-off, uh, no information. Um, so, yeah, for me, FP3 was very crucial. Tried to do as many laps as I could, and yeah, we were behind. I mean, the car was not feeling great, and um, yeah, everything was just very difficult. So I knew that it was gonna be a tough qualifying, but we made some final adjustments, and it all st it started to feel better. But uh, yeah, to be on the front row, um, yeah, it's, I think, an incredible result for us. As you say, you haven't been happy with the car in practice. Have you made a breakthrough with it ahead of qualifying? Uh, yeah, I barely did any laps, so um, I think uh, it could only go better, really. So yeah, we were massively on the back foot. So far, of course, it's been quite a terrible weekend in that sense. Um, but yeah, to be on the front row with the difficulties that we had, I think show that we stayed calm and uh, just try to look into the data, you know, to try and understand the car a bit more and try to just be a little bit more uh, competitive. And with so few laps in practice, just how much of an unknown is, is the long run pace of the car going into this Grand Prix? Yeah, it is. Uh, I don't expect miracles. Um, I think Austin, yeah, Ferrari was really, really fast. Um, of course, maybe that week at McLaren was not as strong, but then in the race, I think they were still competitive. So for my side, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess uh, we'll, we'll find out tomorrow. 
And can I ask you about the run to turn one as well? It's a very long one. Carlos thinks he can defend into turn one. Do you employ different tactics here to other races? No, it just depends on your start and then what happens in front of you. I mean, I think I've been in a lot of starting positions around here. Um, and yeah, it's a long run. Anything can happen, but I, I don't really think about it too much. All right. Well done today. Good luck tomorrow. And Lando, let's come to you now. Like Max, you needed to deliver a lap uh, the second run of Q3, and you did. Just how good was that final lap? Uh, not good enough, clearly. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm, let's say, relatively happy-ish. Uh, still to be P3. Um, not a great day, yes. I mean, I missed, obviously, F FP1, and then we had the, the alternate tyres, so... I felt like a bit on, on the back foot, probably not as much as what Max was, but um, not been that comfortable at, at all. And uh, found some good steps into qualifying, and obviously Q1 and Q2 were very good, but I, I mean, I found the limit very quickly. And uh, I was happy uh, to find the limit, and, and things were good, but uh, just couldn't progress from there. The car was, uh, was too difficult to drive in Q3. Um, too difficult to get, especially three tenths out of it, comparing to Carlos. So I'm happy with, with third. Um, for a minute, it looked like it could have been better, but um, I think uh, we finished where we, uh, we should be. Well, Lando, given your pace in Q1 and Q2, fastest, just what changed for Q3? Why was the car suddenly more difficult? I was at the limit. I couldn't go any quicker. So um, it's more I think the others just didn't get the most out of it. Um, yeah, pretty much every corner I was close to locking up and <laughs> making mistakes. And uh, I did that in my Q3 run one lap, um, but I had definitely nowhere near close to, to three tenths left in the car. So it was more that um, they just went quicker. I, I was at the limit. I, I got everything out of the car already in Q1 and Q2. Um, made us look like the ones to beat, but uh, honestly, since, since F1 Ferrari have been uh, the guys to beat and, and Carlos is on top today. So... Um, uh, challenging to beat them tomorrow. So a challenge to beat Ferrari tomorrow. So do you think you have the raw pace to beat them or are you going to have to be a bit clever, cleverer than them to beat them? Uh, I mean, the race pace is always a tough one to, to know. Um, the last few weekends, they've been extremely quick and, and quicker than us. So it's... Uh, I don't have the confidence to say, uh, yes, we can, we can just beat them on pace. Um, like today, not, a, not on their level, but... Uh, tomorrow's another day. Um, you know, if we can have a good start, hopefully it's exciting down to turn one. Um, but yeah, Carlos is going to be fast. Uh, like he said, he's got nothing to lose, and um, they've been fastest for the last few weekends, so we'll try our best. But um, I don't think we have the pace compared to them at the minute. All right, thank you. We'll leave it there. Let's open this to the floor now. As ever, name and publication, please. Who's got the first one? Erwin Jeghi, Motorsport.com. Question for Max. Um, your first lap time was deleted in Q3. Did you already have the feeling that you might have been over the limit there? And how did you readjust for your second lap? Thank you. I, I think it's always a very uh, fine line around turn two. Um, yeah, you try to, of course, prepare it as well as you can. And yeah, sometimes you're just out. Sometimes, you know, you're just in. But yeah, for the second run, I was probably a little bit more careful in, in turn two and three. So... It wasn't as perfect as I would have liked, but at least the, the lap counted. Thank you, Max. Another one. Christian Maynard, motorsportmagazin.com. Uh, question to all three of you. Yesterday, you had quite an extensive driver briefing here. Um, a lot of talks about what happened in Austin and uh, driver guide driving guidelines. Is it for you clear now what is allowed and what not, and are there any changes to, to before? Let's go in order. Carlos, please, first. I think it was a positive, uh, productive meeting. I think a lot of drivers opened up about how they felt about each situation and what we think is the best way forward. Uh, yeah, how you interpret the rules and those uh, driving guidelines that the stewards are gonna apply penalties with, they're still the same coming into this weekend and probably I think they will be applied in a, in a similar manner. But um, yeah, I think moving forward, it was a productive meeting and. I think in Qatar we will have some solutions that hopefully will offer, I think, better understanding for the driver and better, um, better racing in general. And yeah, hopefully it should be better. I think Carlos explained it perfect. Okay, next one, please. Uh, Luke Smith from The Athletic. Um, Carlos, picking up on Ferrari's upswing in form that you're experiencing right now, the confirmation in Austin, 
going into your final five races with the team, like how sweet it is that you're hitting this purple patch, a good chance to sign off on a high and maybe even a Constructors' Championship? Um, very sweet. Um, given how good the car is, how well I'm driving recently, you know, it's obviously optimistic going into the last five races. At the same time, bittersweet because it gives me a feeling Ferrari might be in the fight for the World Championship next year and I will not be there to, to use it. And I felt like I've been quite a big part of this team during the last four years trying to prepare the team to, to fight for that championship next year, you know, and the fact that I'm driving well, being fast with the car and I'm living in five races is definitely leaves me a bit, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, but not with a very good feeling. But it's what it is. I'm going to try and, as I've said, no, win more races, uh, st stand in the podium uh, for as long as I can during these five races and uh, enjoy that. And then we will think about next year. Thank you, Carlos. Jesus yeah. Valseiro de Arias, question for Carlos. Uh, at the start, are you taking extra care because the two drivers behind are fighting for the championship and do you, you don't want to interfere or, or just the opposite? Maybe you can be more aggressive than them. Uh, no, honestly, the start, I will just do everything I can to, to, to stay in P1 because also around Mexico, that's really important for the cooling of the car, for the tires and everything. No, so I'll do everything I can. Uh, but I say my focus is on the zero to 100 and on the launch. And then everything else happening from then onwards, I depend also on how good my, my rivals start and, uh, and, um, and all the instinctive decisions that we all take in the start. No? And uh, I'll trust my, my instinct and obviously with the intention of getting out of that corner P1 for sure. Thank you. Any more? Uh, Tim Harini, TSN. Question for Carlos. Carlos, congratulations. Uh, you're the only driver to get into the 115s on that push lap at the end. Uh, can you just take us through the, the lap, like how on the limit you were and were there any moments where you may have been thinking, like, ooh, this may not stick? Yeah. Um, there were two really good laps. And the fact that the first lap was so good and so much clear of the field allowed me to take even further risks. In Q3, I added a bit of front wing just because I had nothing to lose and see if by adding a bit more front end to the car, I would go even quicker. But yeah, that's what happens when the first lap is so, so good. Also, the first lap of Q3, I didn't take many risks with a turn two curb, uh, trying to stay away from track limits. While in the second lap, I knew that the first might be enough for Paul, and I just uh, tried to, to maximize the track limits there, and it gave me for free a tenth, and then I kept for the, for the rest of the lap. So yeah, two very good laps, especially when you see the two, three guys I have behind me <laughs> with Lando, Max, and Charles, obviously, to be two, three tenths clear must be uh, some very solid laps. Thank you. Any more? Yep. Erwin Yechi, Motorsport.com. Question for Lando. Uh, you are using a new floor this weekend. I think yesterday you said it's not much better. Um, is it delivering less than the team expected? Uh, no, it's delivering exactly what the team expects. So it helps. But um, <laughs> yeah, if it was a 2 3 tenth upgrade, I, um, I think it would easily be a P1. But um, we're talking about tiny things. And uh, it's a lot less than probably what people think on the outside. When you talk about upgrades, you normally think of one, two, three tenths, uh, and it's not even that. So, uh, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, another one. Christian Menard, Motorsport Magazine.com. Another one for you, Carlos. Um, you mentioned that you focus on the, on the break, on the qualifying performance and tire preparations. Do you think you could have been in, that, in this situation even before, or did you need uh, new tools for that? Is it just setup, or was it upgrade related that Ferrari is so strong now? Um, I think the upgrades are helping for sure. I think the circuit char characteristic is a, a very important factor. Like, I don't expect to be on pole in Qatar. Uh, just given how weak we are in high speed, but in the low speed, how tight the corners are and how um, how good we are in uh, in curbing around Mexico, I said that we had a good chance and it's been like that. And also I, I try honestly to, to be as realistic and as honest as possible with you guys when I talk about our prospects to each race. Given, I don't know, I was left Singapore with a really um, strange feeling with, with the mistake I did in, in qualifying with how tricky it was for us to switch on the tires, how one session we could be P1, the next session we were one second off Lando, and I was like, 
I need to find something because it cannot be that from one session to another we, we have six, eight, ten swing on on tire performance over one lap. And uh, yeah, I will work during the three weeks to see how can we make it a, a bit better in quality so then we can uh, fight in the race with a good race pace that the car has. Carlos, thank you. Thanks to all three of you. We will leave it there. Well done. Good luck tomorrow.